You can't always diagnose people on the internet. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. And if it's your first time here, hello, welcome. This is Essential Patients and I am Patients. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about something concerning that I have seen people talk about on the internet. Sometimes we should take it a little bit more seriously. And that is people who experience in hair loss. It is such a sad thing, but especially for women, a lot of them, it takes a toll on their mental health as well as their self-esteem and self-confidence. But let's get into talking about reasons why your hair could be falling out and what you should do in order to remedy it at least make the situation better and I definitely sympathize and empathize with a lot of women who are experiencing this condition it is not a good thing it's one thing to want to have short hair by choice it's another thing for you to be losing huge clumps of hair in your head so let's get straight into it but before we do remember to like this video subscribe to my channel and let's get straight into possibly why your hair could be falling out one of the first things is that it could be medical so it could be genetic it can be an illness it could be your age so go to a doctor sometimes I, when I see it on the internet and I see people give it advice about oh use this or you use this I appreciate the sentiment but at the end of the day it could just be an illness that you're going through and yes your hair could grow back if you use all these oils and methods but what was the underlying condition and we need to really get into the habit of going to the doctor and seeking beyond temporary solutions for when we see something concerning happening. Whenever I notice a change in my body, I try to go to the doctor and see, okay, what is happening? I went through a situation where I was a new for years, but did not know and went all diagnosed because I didn't go to the doctor. And when I finally did, it made sense why I was always so tired, felt drained. I kept in that unit for many, many years until recently I had it treated using iron pills. I was consistent with my iron pills. I'm doing so much better now. But had I just chucked it up to doing something like exercising, which I was, eating better, which I was, taking all these vitamins and supplements, I would never have known what the underlying condition is. So let's not just look for quick fixes, let's look for good fixes, such as going to the doctor and asking the difficult questions as to why is this happening, beyond just taking temporary solutions off the internet. The next thing is that it could be pregnancy related. So it could be something I experience when you're pregnant, or you can experience this after pregnancy. Postpartum hair loss is very common. A lot of women have a glow in their pregnancy, not all. Some do lose hair during their pregnancy, but others have flourishing hair where their hair becomes thicker and longer and it grows well. And the moment they have the baby, their hair starts falling out and they have postpartum shedding. Very common. Talk to your doctor about how normal it is, what should be the normal shedding to experience and anything beyond that, what you can do to remedy it. It's not something that you should take just for granted because it's normal. I think sometimes we do that and we say, oh, it's normal and then we don't ask even more questions because it could be normal for some, but for others, it may not be. So always keep a doctor close when it comes to these issues. The next thing is that it can be stress induced hair loss. And we all know it's true. I know when I'm stressing, sometimes I'm just like pulling my hair. Sometimes I find that my body changes when I'm very stressed. The effects of my hair, I've not studied it as much, but I do know I get bloated when I'm very stressed, typically because I am working a lot, going to school, and I'm not sleeping enough, maybe eating not enough or not eating as well as I should have, and I just get bloated when I don't get enough sleep. So overall, it's just something that I have to understand and take precautions to make sure that I'm finding good coping mechanisms. Most of which is a good night's sleep. So find out what is stressing you out. Try to manage your stress and find better coping mechanism if it's just a stressful situation that cannot change for a while. Like I'm not gonna finish grad school for a while. I'm obviously gonna continue working full time. I'm obviously gonna continue doing YouTube and be more involved in other things that I already am. So the best thing is finding the best way to prioritize, get a good work-life balance, and also prioritize sleep beyond that. And manage my stress in a way that it doesn't overtake my life and keep me in a state of my body not feeling comfortable. And also taking a break, that's always good. Taking a day off to relax and to enjoy your life and enjoy your day. 
that's always a good thing as well. The next thing that can cause hair loss is definitely medications. You can't always diagnose people on the internet. Just because they have a certain bald spot like you, just because they have a certain hair loss pattern, doesn't mean they have the alopecia. It doesn't mean they have all these things, tension, hair, stress. It could be the medications you're taking. And that's the thing about the internet. You don't know everybody's complete lifestyle. You don't know everybody's complete day-to-day -day routine. So it could be that they're taking a certain medication that the side effect is hair loss. And while that sucks, sometimes that could be the medication that's keeping them alive. That could be the medication that's keeping them going. So would you rather take the hair loss or would you not? For example, cancer, when people go through chemotherapy, a lot of times they lose their hair, all forms of hair, including their eyebrows. But if it's something that's gonna save their lives, of course they're gonna take that over having hair and eyebrows. There's no competition. So that's why we have to be careful being internet diagnosers and just telling people that, oh, use this and use this hair oil. Because no matter what, we don't know anybody's complete lifestyle. So it's important to have these nuances as to what somebody could be facing. The fifth reason why you could be losing your hair is certainly the products you are using. Research the products that you are using before you buy them. Don't just take word of mouth that somebody has said, an influencer, they'll take it as word and use it. Even when I did my natural hair journey video where I broke down every single product that I've ever used, most of the products I had already received before I bought, but also if you want to use the exact same products, still research them to make sure that they're good for your hair. For example, I don't use dry shampoo, and I've never used dry shampoo. Why? Because I've seen so many lawsuits about the chemicals used in dry shampoos causing damage to people's scalp and causing hair loss. I've also followed stuff on certain products and certain ingredients. Now, as a person who is educated in the sciences, into chemistry and physics, I know that certain ingredients are needed to promote shelf life, certain chemical bonding. So you can't have, or it's difficult to have products that are affordable, that have the best ingredients. You could have to pay for those. But it's about picking the lesser of two evils and picking something that is not completely damaging to your hair. So I'm very careful about the hair products that I use. In the new year, going towards more sustainable products as well and even be more cautious about it. And that's another reason why I always encourage people not to become product junkies but to use a product in its capacity properly for a period of time before jumping on another because you never know what ingredients that you can be going from it to and also to mention a combination of product mixing and what that causes for your hair it may not be a good sign the next thing are bad habits that can be causing your hair to fall off such as smoking doing drugs alcoholism that is not good a lot of times it will thin your hair it would cause your hair to be stringy because your body is surviving it's it's fighting to survive so when you feed your body crap like that your body is in survival mode and it can care less about growing flourishing hair why would your body prioritize growing hair when your body is just trying to survive so when you feed your body crap don't be surprised when your hair is not flourishing. And this also moves on to the next point, which is bad eating habits. When you're not feeding your body the nutrients that it needs, and instead you're overly consuming processed food, overly consuming alcohol, smoking, drugs, and just things that are not helpful to our body, your body is not gonna prioritize hair growth. So let's live in the real world and know that our body is trying to keep us alive. That's the main purpose. And your body does the best it can to keep your heart beating and to keep your brain alive. Everything else comes after. Your body knows how to prioritize its resources. So if you're not feeding it good resources and drinking water and eating good, having good habits about what you put in your body, know that your body is a temple and you have to carefully vet everything that comes into it, you're going to suffer the consequences and part of that could be hair loss. So if your hair is not doing great but you have these bad habits, try to cut them out and see how your body thrives and therefore your hair thrives. The next reason why your hair could be falling out are tight hairstyles. Some of these hairstyles where I see them almost braiding the scalp of the client is very concerning. I am concerned. I am very concerned as to the health of your hair, your scalp, and the future beyond that hairstyle. And sometimes people only think about that 
current hairstyle and how it looks first of all it doesn't even look that good when your scalp is so tight you can feel the uncomfortableness around that hairstyle then go beyond that and think about the future like how your hair follicles are pressured to look a certain way and what the results can be so i rather choose the path that my hairstyles are reasonably well done but not compromising the health of my hair and that's why i don't go to the salons as much because i think a lot of hairstyles care about the hair style rather than the hair health and if you're the type of person who braids your own hair that's a tight leave so it can last longer know that having your hair last a couple of weeks even a month more and compromising the health of your hair your hair follicles is not worth it and that could be why you could be suffering from alopecia tractional alopecia tension damage and all of these things that are not good for your hair so look at the type of hairstyles that you do look at the pictures and ask yourself where are they comfortable and if you have a hairstyle that takes you days to comfortably sleep in you probably should not be doing that style consistently the next reason why your hair could be falling out are definitely relaxers i've watched so many relaxer hair video fails with people like i'm tired of my natural hair i want to relax it and then your hair falls out and I'm never happy to see that because I don't think anybody choosing to realize their hair should be a reason why their hair falls out. But at the end of the day, you know that these chemicals can be very damaging to your hair. And if you leave it in for even a second longer than you should, your likelihood of your hair damaging is super, super high and falling out even higher. Do not take these chemicals as everyday like leave conditioner, shampoo, deep conditioner. They're not that. They break the bonds in your hair and they can actually break your hair. And if you have the type of hair that is not healthy especially, that is not in a good state, that is fragile, you are more likely and prone to your hair breaking rather than somebody who has stronger, healthier hair. And the last but absolutely not the least reason why your hair can be falling out is that your hair care practices are just poor, they're not good, and because of that your hair is falling out. You're not taking good care of it, you don't have a hair care routine, you're neglecting your hair, you're being overly harsh with your hair, and your hair could be falling out. Or you could just be pulling on your hair, so people will pull on your hair so much that your hair literally falls out of your head and that's very concerning. Analyzing your hair care routine, your hair care practices, what you do with your hair on a day-to-day -day basis, on a week-to-week -week basis, and where could breakage and hair falling out be coming from. Everything has a root cause. And as an engineer, when something goes wrong, we always look for root cause, and we do a root cause analysis as to not just the first reason why it's falling out, but then the second reason why, what is the primary reason why. And you go far back till you no longer can find anything beyond that. So what are the root causes of your hair falling out? What practices are you doing? Maybe you're the type of person that is using a rat tail comb to comb your hair and pulling it out. Maybe that's why your hair is falling out. Again, it could go back to chemicals that you put in your hair. It could be that you're using your relaxers very often and your hair can't take it anymore. So what are you doing that is a root cause of your hair falling out? And always be ready to seek help from the doctors because they're there to help us. And I know that I have access to doctors and dermatologists readily, but still seek help where you can because sometimes it's beyond our control or it could be your body screaming for help any way that it can and it's good to listen to your body and it's good to listen to your hair and always be in the best health that you possibly can so with that bringing this video to an end thank you all so much like comment and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and ring the notification bell so you do not miss out on any of the future videos that i post and if you like this video watch another one i have like 200 videos on my channel and so many natural hair videos. I'm definitely sure that you'll find something you'll enjoy. And may I recommend my natural hair journey if you haven't already watched it, or my video on the rise and fall of the natural hair community. Let me know in the comment section if your hair has ever fallen out, what was the reason, and how did you find out the thing to Thank you all so much again, and I'll see you next time.